Hello and welcome back. So what I want to talk to you about today is conducted noise measurements. Now normally when you perform this sort of measurements, usually you'll be getting the emission spectra through all of your supply lines. So if there's two, three, whatever. Now the measurements will be very good to tell you how the noise is distributed. So what are the various frequencies present there? But what the measurement will not normally tell you is whether the noise is common mode or is differential mode. And now that is quite an important piece of information since the two types of noise are filtered in different ways. So if you don't know what kind of noise you're having, you're going to have big problems in actually filtering it correctly. So what I want to do today is generate both common mode and differential mode noise and then attempt to separate the two. So if you're curious about how you can do that and more, then keep watching. So let's start off by understanding the difference between differential mode noise and common mode noise. Now, if we're talking about the supply lines, so what I got here is a couple wires connected to a resistor, differential noise will be noise that travels through one wire, passes through your load, and then goes back down the other wire. So all of the differential noise comes in through one of the wires, goes back through the other. Just like you would connect this to a battery or something and the current going through the resistor would be completely differential. Simple enough. Now, common mode noise is noise that travels through both of the wires at the same time and its return path is not through the wires themselves, but through various parasitics in the environment, so stray capacitance. And through the stray capacitance, the common mode noise will close to the earth ground and then back to the noise generator. So let's see how we can generate these two types of noise using a circuit simulator, LT Spice in this case. So what I got here is the basic noise generator. I got two output lines, so this can be plus or minus, neutral and line, depends on the system, and the differential noise will be generated between the two. So it goes out one way, comes back the other. Nice and simple pathway. Now the common mode noise will be noise generated between the earth ground and both of the outputs in equal quantities. And I added these DC isolation capacitors to illustrate that common mode noise is a purely AC form of noise. There's no DC component in this. And now if we run the setup, and we look at the two signal lines, we see that basically they're identical. I mean, there's a bit of a phase shift in between them, but other than that, just by looking at them, you have no idea what part of this noise is common mode, what part is differential. If we check these signals using an FFT analysis, again, basically we see exactly the same thing. So our two main noise sources, one at 500 kilohertz and one at one megahertz, show up in exactly the same way on both of these lines. So by doing these two measurements, you have no idea what is common mode, what is differential mode. Now, to separate the two noise sources, we can start off with the differential noise. And just by looking at this basic schematic, we can see that the differential noise is the noise that is in between the two signal lines. So the way to extract only this component is to subtract the signal on one line from the signal on the other line. So let me just add here a plot plane. And if we now measure the difference between the two signals, we see that we have a clear sine wave whose frequency is 500 kilohertz. So we've extracted our differential noise by subtracting one of the signals from the other one. Now, the common mode signal will be the signal that is present on both of these lines. And other than the common mode signal, what we have is the differential mode signal, but inverted one line compared to the other. So the way to extract the common mode signal from these two signal lines is to add the two up. So now if I add 
a trace here in which I take the two signal lines and just add them together. We get a nice and clean sine wave whose frequency is exactly 1 MHz, so our common mode noise. Now we can see that it's slightly bigger, so there's one more thing missing here and that is a division by 2. Since we added the common mode noise up twice, we ended up with a double value. So this seems simple enough. Add the two signals up together, subtract one from the other and you get both the common mode noise and the differential noise. This seems awfully simple. Does it actually work like this in real life? Let's perform an experiment to find out. Now there's just one problem with implementing this setup in real life and that is related to how the signal generator is connected. You can't really make one of the outputs of the signal generator floating because the ground of both of the signal generator's outputs will be connected to earth ground and so will the oscilloscope. So I made a bit of modification to this setup and I built something like this. So the main difference here is that the differential noise source is connected to ground and to turn it into a floating signal generator I used a small transformer. So the generator itself is connected to one side of the transformer and then connected back to ground with DC isolation and current limitation and then the output of the transformer is used as the floating differential noise output. Other than that, had my DC blocking capacitors for my common mode noise and added a couple resistors so that the two output lines are not completely floating, they're referenced to ground. And the board basically looks something like this. So this is the big transformer, it's an old common mode choke or something, I don't know, all the other components and then I have all my connections on the bottom side. So let's connect it up, see what happens. So the signals that I'm using today are a 200 kilohertz differential mode noise and a 300 kilohertz common mode noise. And the reason why the differential one is so large in comparison to the common mode one is that we'll be seeing the common mode noise anyway as double value and the way I'm making my differential noise floating ends up losing some of the signal. So these are basically my input signals. Let's see what comes out. And if we run this thing, we see that we get a complete mass on both of the outputs. And they look almost identical, just that there's a bit of a phase shift in between them. So just by looking at the outputs individually, you can't really tell what's going on. But now, if we try our addition and subtraction trick, and I'll be doing this using the oscilloscope's built-in mathematics menu. If we subtract one channel from the other, we get a very nice, very clean 200 kilohertz sine wave, which is our differential mode noise. And if we add the two signals together, we get a 300 kilohertz sine wave, which is our common mode signal. So by performing these operations, we are able to extract both the common mode noise and the differential mode noise from our two signal wires. Now the problem is that in real life if you want to perform this sort of analysis you'll be using a spectrum analyzer. I mean you can use the FFT function built into the oscilloscope but usually the spectrum analyzer is the dedicated tool for this job. Now most spectrum analyzers have only one input port. You don't have two ports. So you can't really perform this addition and subtraction using that tool. You're going to be needing some sort of other circuitry to perform this. And that's a topic for a different time. For now, hope you got some useful information out of this. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to be up to date with all my latest videos. And see you next time. Bye bye.